Hello, welcome. Um, I'm Michael with uh, Mount Pack. Uh, this is um, day number four of the uh, 1641 engine rebuild. Um, it is uh, the series 11, 26, 20. And again, this is day number four today. For last time, we um, were installing the all the bearings and the crank and the gears and everything, but um, I didn't have my cam bearings and my uh, connecting rod bearings, the right ones anyway, um, to finish up everything. So today I'm going to install the cam bearings, the connecting rod bearings, and then hopefully install the crankshaft into the case, and then also install the cases together, and then uh, torque everything um, on the case and uh, get it ready for pistons and sliders for next time. Um, so a couple of things to know is that um, this one and the next one is probably uh, the longer duration um, days that you have on your rebuild. Um, I usually try to keep about uh, three to four hours um, scheduled for the installing the two case halves and then about the same for installing the pistons and cylinders and heads for next time. So it's about three, four hours for the pistons and cylinders. Sometimes it's a lot less and sometimes um, I think the maximum has been about three hours or so that I have had, had to spend on installing my pistons and cylinders and heads. So anyway, um, hopefully you uh, <clears throat> find something useful out of this video and um, I hope your build is going well. And uh, like I said before is that uh, every engine has its own uh, personality. And so um, this one's coming together pretty well. Um, I, I haven't really seen a lot of personality yet. I know um, a couple of the, um, um, what do you call it, the studs for the case halves uh, were hard to get out to begin with and I've never had that happen before. Um, and I've been doing this for what, 24-ish uh, years or so. And um, enjoy. Yeah, don't don't uh, forget to like and subscribe below and um, you know, if you have any comments, that'd be awesome too. Let's get started. Uh, here are the connecting rods again. Um, connecting rod bearings. And so now I'm installing the connecting rod bearings. And what I did, what I didn't show you is I made sure um, each of the connecting rods had a, a circle when I put the two pieces together. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but before I noticed that if I didn't put the two halves together properly, then it would be off a little bit. And I think that's due to when they machined them from the uh, new from the factory. But anyway, so afterwards, making sure I knew exactly which ones go where, um, I put the bearings on and then I was able to put them on the engine and um, it went fine. And just remember that um, lube up just the one side that contacts the crankshaft. Don't lube the other side that con comes in contact with the connecting rod. Here is the crankshaft. And so remember that um, the back one that I'm putting on right now is number three. And then um, the nub or whatever you want to call it that goes on the the connecting rod that goes towards the sky so number three is to the left so the proper uh, nub goes up and here's what I'm torquing the connecting rod bolts to it was uh, it said 23 to 25 so I just put uh, 24 okay so here's a torque wrench there's a silver part and then there's that black knob that turns and so once you're done setting that the foot pounds or whatever pounds you're gonna do um, you want to tighten it up with that black part. At least this is my mine that I use. And uh, that black screw kind of tightens down the set torque that you want so it doesn't move while you're actually using the torque wrench. So I torqued up all the rods, and there's the nubs pointing toward the side. From right to left, three, one, four, and then two. And then this is me installing the uh, thrust bearing on the back side or the, uh, we call it the front side of the engine 
that faces to the front of, front of the car where the flywheel goes on. And so I lubed up the actual crankshaft and then I lubed um, using the assembly lube in the middle of the inside of the um, thrust bearing. Remember to put the uh, dowel hole towards the flywheel. Here is the installation of the camshaft bearings. Um, again, do not put grease or oil or lube on the part that touches the case, but put it on the side that touches the camshaft. And this is, uh, there's a double thrust bearing um, on the camshaft um, bearings. And so I, I was just filing off one of the, the nubs because there's not one on this engine. And so there's me installing the crankshaft into the case. And so notice that I'm making sure that all the nubs are in the right spot. And then also I need to find um, the right spot for where the crankshaft needs to be for the timing marks, which is very crucial for installing the engine. Um, right now, the two timing dots on the gears of the crankshaft is um, level with the case, as you can see, and they face me. Um, with that being said, the, the um, distributor that I have is um, facing the build mark. These are pretty nifty things for the lifters. And so these are like a spring action where uh, when you put them into the case where the lifters are, it, it holds the lifters into place. And so when you actually install the case half, it won't, the lifters won't fall out. I've had problems where the lifters would always fall out and then you have to fix them and it was a fun thing and then just cleaning up the engine again and then this is permatex uh, gasket sealer just like an aviation so the it stays kind of moist like this until there's no air and so when the two calves have go together there's no air and so it, it seals up the case very well And then I'm checking on things. I forgot to put these um, washers in. These go in rubber O-rings, whatever you want to call them, into the six um, studs for the case. And so I'm just pushing on the case there. And then after that, I'm going to put the camshaft in. And normally I put the camshaft and everything in and then put the sealer. Oh, here's the timing marks on the um, two gears and make sure that's in line with the case and then that um, I put the build mark towards the right spot and then this is just me lubing up everything make sure everything is good uh, the crank shafts that are pointing towards the ceiling right now oh there's some oil so the crank shafts or sorry connecting rods that are facing towards the ceiling um, you can kind of squeeze them together and they usually stay straight and then you put the case on, and then once it's in place, you kind of kind of slam it down a little bit, and then um, bang it with the rubber mallet. And then these are the six major case screws, and then nuts. And then I put some sealant on there because that's where some oil can escape the engine. And then there's uh, the one to the right below the six larger case nuts okay and then this is what you want to torque them there's four different ones 10 14 20 and then 24 25 excuse me and then so i'm torquing them and every time i torque it so after 10 i move the engine make sure everything's good and then after 14 i move the engine make sure everything's good and i just do that for the other ones and so I do that so the main bearings don't get ruined while we're installing or torquing down the case. Um, I've had it sometimes where I, I thought I had the main bearings in the right spot and I didn't. And then um, when I torqued it down, it starts ruining the main bearings. And, you know, you don't want to ruin those because they're 40 or $50 or maybe even more sometimes. So it's just kind of a thing to make sure as you tighten up everything, you move it to make sure nothing's binding. If something binds, 
you read, you know, take off the case and then um, make sure everything's good, reposition things, and then put it back together. And then I put the 13 millimeters nuts and bolts on there. Um, there was 14 of them that I tightened up. Uh, those went to uh, 10 and then 14 foot pounds. And then I moved the engine, make sure it was good, and everything's awesome. And so now I'm uh, just kind of moving the engine to uh, number one top dead center and uh, just kind of moving the engine again everything seems very good um, and so right now it's at top dead center at number one and so this is top dead center now away from the build mark and there you go there's top dead center Whew, that was uh, probably about three hours worth of work um, because I had some connecting rod bearing um, issues, but um, everything went well. Thanks for joining me today. Hopefully you learned a couple things about uh, putting together a short block. I was able to figure out the, the connecting rod issue, I think. So the two connecting rod halves, they have to be the same um, same side as when they manufacture them or turn them because um, it wasn't and so it was pinching the connecting or the crankshaft so thanks for joining me where we installed the two halves of the uh, case engine and then also uh, connecting rod bearings cam bearings we installed the crankshaft inside the engine and then also the camshaft inside the engine and so um, I know I said it during the video, but I, I torque the main six case nuts four different times with different torques. And each time I torque it, um, it increases. But then also, um, right after I torque it, then I rotate the engine to make sure anything's binding will be noticed. And um, in the past, that's happened before where maybe a main bearing um, hole was off a little bit and the dowel wasn't hitting the hole correctly. And so if you torque it down to 25 foot pounds right off the bat, then you might to ruin the main bearings. And those main bearings are, you know, $40, $50, uh, depending on where you get them. It's just a minor thing that could save you in the, in the long run. Thanks for joining today. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to my channel and share this video with those that you um, associate with the Volkswagen community or somebody that might benefit from it. Thanks so much for watching and uh, have a great day. Thanks.